Hi guys, it is a lovely spring evening. It is a Monday night here in the collapse of everything. Uh, I think Monday, March 4th, 2024. And I thought for the second week in a row, there was going to be no good news to share here uh, at Collapse Chronicles. I thought my Monday good news roundup I had just completely tanked. But I am going through the mainstream media and I am saved by none other than the Texas Tribune. I, <laughs> I, if anybody had ever told me you are going to be doing a good news story on Collapse Chronicles from the Texas Tribune. And the Texas Tribune being one of, of course, the most right-wing, uh, pro-ranching and pro-oil drill, you know, pro-everything that is bad for this planet. And, uh, but I am, uh, hallelujah, we're going to make history. We have the Texas Tribune. We have one article in the Good News Roundup, but uh, it is a good one. Take it away, Texas Tribune. Wildfires ravage cattle country, threatening Texas's agriculture economy. Hallelujah. I can't believe that the Texas Tribune has anybody named Alejandra Martinez working for them. I thought that Greg Abbott would have had a uh, uh, Senor, Senora, or Senorita Martinez on a bus to New York City by now. Anyway, take it away, Alejandra Martinez. Give us some long over good news from the great state of Texas. I don't think you will ever see the words climate change in this article. I will be shocked. I honestly don't know. I just... Uh, I will be shocked if we see the words uh, climate change anywhere in this article. The largest wildfire in Texas history has devastated the state's agriculture, blazing through more than one million acres of land in the panhandle, killing thousands of livestock destroying crops and gutting infrastructure. You know, I have said many times that what we need on this planet is one big Texas barbecue. That uh, I, 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 I love, uh, there's nothing I love better than beef. I do, I have not eaten beef in how many years? You know, I am a virtue signaler and that's my virtue signaling is not eating beef. I've been saying what we need on this planet is one big Texas barbecue, and we got it. I've been manifesting this barbecue for how many years? <coughs> the agriculture industry, a big driver of the state's economy, was already facing pressure from prolonged and widespread drought. I guess that's going to be as close as they get to the words climate change, <clears throat> facing pressure from prolonged and widespread drought that forced ranchers to manage smaller herds, contributing to a decrease in beef production nationally. And now the series of wildfires in the panhandle this week is another blow as many ranchers try to rebuild their herds and operations during the, quote, cooler months of the year. So, this was, what, the last, the, they say, uh, March blows in like a lion. You can smell the barbecue beef in the Texas, and I think that fire's still going. Over 85% of the state's cattle population is located on ranches in the Panhandle, according to the Texas Department of Agriculture. In 2021, 
agriculture accounted for 9% of Texas's gross state product. I'm surprised it was, I would have thought it would have been, been probably uh, oil. Uh, it would be curious to see, I'm guessing oil. Uh, anyway, agriculture added $186 billion to the state's economy. Uh, while numbers on exactly how many cattle were lost in the fire are unknown, experts say ranchers will face significant economic pressure from the damage. Yes, this is David P. Anderson, a professor, a professor of ag economics, blah, 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 an economist with Texas A&M University. Quote, even if you were fortunate to be able to get your animals out fast enough, the economic impact on those affected are big. Do you think so? The fires have left little food or water for livestock. Some farmers lost everything. Property fences are gone. Hundreds of miles of power lines have burned, leaving no electricity to pump water from wells, which farmers rely on to hydrate their cattle. You know, we're talking about, the, you know, pumping these massive amounts of water from the Oglala Aquifer, which is one reason uh, that the Texas Panhandle looks like it does other than the overgrazing for the past, what, 200 years, and goddamn cow has no business on, uh, on the damn Texas panhandle. They need to be raising damn uh, bison out there. Uh, but of course, you know, they still raise cotton. They raise cotton in the Texas panhandle, and needless to say, the the oil and gas industry uh, probably slurp up more water than those cows. Uh, and it will take years, years for the land to recover and grow new vegetation for livestock in the area. Feed stores are already seeing many people in need of cattle food. Wade Mall, 53, had never seen a fire like this one. A massive dark plume with no end. The owner of Mall, Mall Feed and Seed in Pampa, Texas, said ranchers' hay supply has burned up and lots of people are in desperate need to feed their cows and other animals that did not get injured. Quote, it's quite a bit of a loss. Any inventory that ranchers had saved up, being hay or grass, is gone. They're going to have to feed them every bite they get for the next little bit. The store is offering discounts on hay, making free deliveries and taking donations. Uh, <laughs> Mall feels fortunate. He doesn't own any cattle. Do you think so? On various Facebook groups, community members are sharing detail, details on where to donate hay to farmers whose land was engulfed by flames. Yes. Some ranchers are coming as far from San Angelo to help. Pearson Sparks, 21, woke up early Friday and loaded two wheat round bales 50 bales of alfalfa, two tons of cow feed, two potloads of water, and $300 worth of vet supplies onto two trucks. Sparks come from a rodeo family. Oh, Sparks. The guy's name is Sparks. I, I <laughs> you know, something about a guy named, uh, named Sparks. Uh, Going, going to a to a place where one million acres. I've never heard what started these fires. Uh, I guess, uh, I guess lightning. I don't know. Uh, sparks 
comes from a rodeo family and owns cows, horses, goats, and a donkey. Yep, we have a bunch of livestock as well, so let's hit close to home knowing that some of these people are losing all their animals. We're just trying to reach out because we know if we were in their shoes, we would want the same. Yes. Uh, all right. What does Greg Abbott have to say? I, Greg Abbott is bussing the dead cows to New York City. Uh, as I think the dead cattle are heading to New York City. Compliments of uh, to feed those migrants. At a Friday press conference in Borger, Governor Greg Abbott said that people, this one is kind of weird, people who lost livestock and horses are not eligible to receive FEMA disaster assistance. But he added that the state is providing many grants to help ranchers in the recovery process and is securing a location in each affected county. Blah, blah, blah. Take him. What does Mr. Abbott have to say? We know that the loss of cattle is extraordinary, but it goes beyond that. We are looking at the big picture holistically, ways in which we can assist both the ranchers and the farmers to be able to recover from this. Yes, the Texas Department of Agriculture uh, handing out relief fines shit which can be used to rebuild fences and restarting operations. Uh, Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller estimated that cattle losses are in the thousands with many more to come. Yes. It's a tough situation. Ranchers' income from crops and livestock is gone. So now they'll just have to pull themselves up by their bootstraps and do the best they can. Yes. So what are the recommendations? The Texas A&M University AgriLife Agri Extension is recommending ranchers to begin inspecting and monitoring cattle, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, the last time the cattle inventory was this low was in 1951 at 82 million head, according to the USDA's National Agricultural Statistics Service. The 2024 inventory was 87.2 billion, uh, an estimate made about a month before the fire. Uh, this goes on and on, blah, blah, blah. Texas is cattle country. Yes, it is. When you lose what I call a significant part of your cow herd, the supply goes up and prices go up. Some economist, Mr. Anderson, said it will take years for Texas ranchers to recover, but the wildfires, quote, probably won't have much effect on overall cattle and beef prices, quote, even a fire that burns a million acres and is as big and terrible as it is, it is a relatively localized thing if we think about cattle production over the whole United States. Anderson pointed out that the cattle lost in the panhandle is a very small fraction of the overall cattle herd in the U.S., but it is a step in the right direction for that big Texas barbecue going on. So never let it be said that we do not have good news about catastrophic wildfires and 
Well, you understand, guys, that, that you, you'll never hear the term forest fire. The, 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 it, the, I don't know if there's three trees on the, the, the Texas panhandle. It's truly a God-forsaken hellhole. Uh, the Texas panhandle was a wasteland, uh, good God, a, a, a century ago. It's truly a, a soul-sucking hellhole. Everything about the Texas panhandle. Burn the fucking shithole place down. Burn every fucking cow, burn every power line, every barbed wire fence, every oil well, every fracking rig. Jesus. If you have to pick the epicenter uh, where we've been overdue for a catastrophic wildfire, I think that son of a bitch is still uh, burning tonight. And I'm going to pray for... Uh, for some hot, dry winds, clean that shit out, and uh, <laughs> I won't let those ranchers get a taste of their own damn karma. I got no sympathy, none. Anywho, that was our good news for the day, and with that, uh, I'm gonna go have some or organic baby greens and some Walmart tater tots to celebrate. There you go, that's a great combination. Organic baby greens and Walmart tater tots. Well, I guess uh, I'll be a vegetarian here tonight. Then it's off to Netflix. Bye guys.